Right, question 10, the stats question here. Um, so, in athletics competition, there were a number of heats in a 1500 meter race, and the heats, the times it took the runners to complete the race, were normally distributed with a mean of 225 seconds. So that's my U, my mu, and a standard deviation of 12 seconds. Find the percentage of runners who took more than 240 seconds to run the race. So when it says percentage or probability, I'm thinking of the Z scores. So we're working out, or we're asked there, the percentage of my values to be more than 240. I must change this into a Z score. And I'm going to use my standardizing formula for that. So here it's 240 minus my 225 over the standard deviation of 12. 15 over 12, which gives me 5 over 4 of 1.25. So now, instead of saying x is bigger than 240, it said is bigger than 1.25. If you want, plot a wee normal distribution. It's positive value, there's my 1.25, and it's bigger than it. So I'm dealing with less than 50%. Remember, 50% on either side of the curve. So I look at my value at 1.25, and get 0 0.8944. So it's 1 minus 0 0.8944. When you do that, you get 0 0.1056. And here it says the percentage, 10.56%. Just times it by 100. Next thing, 20% of runners with the fastest times qualified for the final. Assuming the race times are normally distributed once again. Work out the time. So here I'm working out the time, which is my x, what I said in part 1 needed to qualify for the final. Now keep in mind this is a race. So it says the fastest 20%, you know, it's not the tallest or the heaviest or the smartest, it's the fastest. So the fastest is the smallest value. So I'm down here on the left hand side, I'm going to have a negative Z score. So 20% down there, 80% up here, and my answer has to be smaller than 225, which was my mean. So I have to work out the time. And firstly, what I'm going to do using this picture is work out my Z score. So 80%, I have to look at what Z score corresponds to 80%. And when I look on page 36 and 37, I see that 80% is roughly 0 0.84. Now remember, it can't be a plus 0 0.84, otherwise I'm over here. It has to be a minus. To give me that smaller value than the mean. Throw that then into my formula. I'm working out my x is still the same mean and still the same standard deviation because it's given in part a of the question. Cross multiply there. And then just work that out. Bring it across maybe your 225. And you get 214.92. It says to the near second, 215 seconds. And it makes it looks right because it's less than 225 and it's not crazy. Next one, Sally takes part in a number of different races. Probability that she makes a false start is 5%. So the probability of not being a false start is 95%. Find the probability that she makes her first false start in her fourth race. So what is she doing here? First race, not false start. And, how do we say and in maths is multiply? Another not false start, another not false start, and then a false start. So we just times those two together. Now you can use percentages, you can use it as a fraction, or you can use it as a decimal, whatever way you like. So I might just type it as a decimal, it might be quicker. I'll be groovy, I'll go to the power of 3 times 0 0.05 and you get 0 0.0429. See, 20 relays teams took part in the competition. For any particular team, the probability they drop the baton is 0.1. So the probability of not drop is 0 0.9. If 
find the probability at most two teams drop the baton. So this is my binomial distribution. And this is where I look at page 33 of my formula book. And I see here my binomial distribution at most two teams. So that means there could be zero teams dropping it. 0.1 to the power of zero, 0.9 to the power of 20. Or, how do you say or mass is add? It could be one team dropping it. That means there's 19 teams not dropping it. Or, which is add, there could be two teams dropping it. 0.9 to the power of 18 teams not dropping it. Now throw that onto your calculator. When I did this originally, I made a mistake typing it in. Um, so what I'm saying, 20 choose 0. 0.1 to the power of 0, anything to the power of 0 is 1. I know we can hear you shouting it, but what can I do? 0.9 to the power of 20. I'll throw it all in this time. I choose 1. Hope it fits. See if a syntax error comes up here. There'll be carnage. And you get 0 0.69 or 6769. Hopefully that's right. You know, take your time at that. Next one. 300 runners run on a road race. Each runner has a number from 1 to 300 inclusive. No two runners have the same number. Two runners are picked at random from the race. Work out the probability that the sum of their numbers is 101. So what I can get there, I can get a 1 and a 100. Or you can get like a 2 and a 99. Remember all the time this is or. Or you can get a 3. And an 88 get a feed of the question, or you can get a 4 and an 87, and so on. But you'll see a pattern emerging, and the key one here is when you get to 50, and you'll get 51. Because if I go any further, it'll be 51 and 50, which is the same thing. So realistically, there's 50 combinations here, or 50 um, times this will occur. So if I just work out the probability of one of these, so the probability of 1, is 1 out of 300 and multiply say the number 100 is 1 out of 299 I could add them all up or I could simply times that there by 50 1 over 1794 And this real kind of tight question here. Yeah, you can read through it for yourselves. But, um, let me see. Sorka came 5625 in the Windy Marathon. So exactly 5264 out of 6,000 runners had a finishing time that was less than Sorka's. Sorka's finishing time for both marathons was the same. Use this fact and the details below to estimate Sorka's position. So that is difficult. Um, so let's have a wee think about this. So we're going to work with the Windy Marathon here. And the Windy Marathon, the proportion of the amount of people that finish below Sorka, there was 5 2, we'll use this fact, 5 2, 6 4. Out of 6,000. Drop down something, our mind will start going. Because I'm starting to freeze here. And I get 0 0.8773. Yeah. Now from this, I'm thinking a normal distribution because look at all the information they've given me. I can get a Z score. And I'm flicking back over to page 36, 37. So say there's my mean which is 254 minutes. 
87.73% of the population has a time that's quicker to, than circa. So I can work out the Z score from that by looking at what value of Z gives me roughly 0.8773 and that answer is 1.16. So what I've got to do, that is 1.16 standard deviations from the mean. You know, 1.16 standard deviations from the mean. So to work out her time, all I've got to do is, there's my mean, 254, plus 1.16 standard deviations, that's just 38. So 254 plus 1.16 times 38, and there's her time there. 298.08 minutes. If you want to that in seconds, you know, press that ABC button wherever it is. Set it there. But, yeah, no odds. Use this fact. So that's her time. And it's going to be the same time now in the sunny marathon. She's running it in 298.08 minutes. Now, what are we trying to work out? We're trying to work out her position. So we're nearly going to go in reverse or the opposite of that now. So we must see what Z score corresponds to the 298.08 minutes for this sunny race or the sunny marathon. So X minus U over standard deviation. We know the X which is 298.08 minus the mean which is 247 over 29. And we get 1.76 is my Z score. And um, work out our position now. Oh yeah. So if we're looking at the Z score here, 1.76. What proportion or what percentage of people? So I'm looking at the table again. 1.76 gives me 0.9608% or 96.08% of the population have finished in front of her. So 2,000. Multiply that by 0 0.9608. One nine two one point six. People finish in front of her, so that means she must come one nine two two in her position.